Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Jared Seibert. I'm a board certified otolaryngic surgeon, ENT surgeon, head and neck surgeon. We go by many names. I'm also a fellow at the American Academy of Otolaryngic Allergy, and I'm here to talk to you today about sinusitis. By way of introduction, I hail from the great city of Chicago originally. That's where I did my medical school training. After medical school training, I went out to Tripler Army Medical Center in Honolulu, Hawaii, and I was there for five years doing my otolaryngology residency training. Yes, you can see the rainbow here on the slide. We did pretty much have a rainbow every single day when I drove to work. I left work at night, so I didn't get to appreciate them at night. After five years in Honolulu, we were transferred out to Seoul, South Korea, where we spent a lovely two years. This time of year always reminds me of Seoul with the cherry blossoms in bloom. And I highly recommend a visit out there if you've never been to Southeast Asia. After Seoul, we were transferred to Savannah, Georgia, where I spent the final two years of my military career. And then a few years ago, we moved out here to Santa Fe, and we've loved every minute of it. So back to our topic at hand, the sinuses and the diseases that affect them. I just wanna do a quick anatomy tour of the sinuses. It's important to understand this before we talk about the sinuses. You can see here on this picture, on top, the upper sinuses are the frontal sinuses. They're the light blue. They're in front of our brain and above our eyes, and they drain down into our nose. Behind and below them in the green, the little speckled small sinuses, those are our ethmoid sinuses. Those are between our eyes and underneath our brain. Beneath those, you can see the large purple sinuses. The largest sinuses are our maxillary sinuses. They're underneath our eyes and above our teeth. And then finally, last but not least, the sphenoid sinuses, which are behind our eyes and underneath our brain, pictured here in a light orange color. So what do our sinuses do? Why do we have them? First of all, if our sinuses were filled with solid bone, they would add a considerable amount of weight to our skulls, adding anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds of extra weight. The other role of our sinuses are to heat and humidify and clean the air that we breathe in. Even on a hot day here in Santa Fe, we have to warm the ambient temperature of the air we breathe in up to our lung temperature. We also have to humidify it. I think we all are quite aware of the dryness of the air compared to the dryness of our nose and our lungs. And then cleaning our air. We're always breathing in dust particles, allergen particles, and the mucus that our sinuses create helps to clear those out as well as the bacteria and viruses that we breathe in. Last and probably most important, our sinuses are designed to help protect the vital structures of our face and skull, namely our eyes and brains. Back in the day when our ancestors were running around with clubs, hitting each other, living in caves, these structures of our sinuses would help protect our eyes and brains so that we could live another day to continue living in caves and hitting other people with our clubs. When good sinuses go bad, this is what we're here to talk about today. What happens to our sinuses? You can see here in this picture on the left side of the screen a normal, healthy appearing sinuses. You can see the frontal, ethmoid, and maxillary sinuses in this picture. What I'd like to draw your attention to is, especially in the frontal sinuses, you can see small little areas as well as in the maxillary sinuses where the sinuses drain. When sinus infections or inflammation occurs, these openings close off and you can see just a little bit of inflammation on the right side of the screen can cause the backup of fluid as well as predispose the sinuses to becoming infected. So what symptoms do people have when their sinuses are misbehaving? They can have purulent or discolored nasal discharge out the front or the back of the nose into the throat. You can also have sinus congestion or nasal obstruction, and also sinus pressure, almost like a headache. At one point or other, we've probably all experienced one, if not all, of these symptoms. In a study in 2012, when they looked at all the reasons people went to the doctors, 12% of individuals at one point during that year went to the doctors for some sort of sinus disease or sinus infection complaint. As doctors, we look at some other symptoms that might potentially contribute or help define that you're having a sinus infection. You can have a decreased sense of smell or taste, something that's been on all of our minds, I'm sure, during this pandemic. Fever, headache, migraine-type symptoms, ear pain and pressure or fullness, bad breath, dental irritation or pain, cough, or even fatigue. Now, when we look at and define sinus infections, we're not looking at just one of these. So if you're only having trouble breathing through your nose, 
and no other symptoms is probably not a sinus infection, more an anatomic issue. But if you're having two or more of these symptoms, it's potentially a sinus infection, and we'd be happy to see you and work that out for you. Now, what causes sinus infections? The most common cause of sinus infections are viruses. Viruses like coronavirus or other viruses that attack the nasal cavity. Now, with COVID, the sinus infection has been the least of people's worries, and rightly so. But there are many viruses that attack our nasal cavity, and this by far is the most common cause of sinus infections, more than 90%. Now these viruses are not responsive to antibiotics and therefore antibiotics are not warranted in the treatment of sinus infections. Typically the symptoms resolve after seven to 10 days. The role of antibiotics is more important as you can see here in the picture next to the viruses with bacteria. Now bacterial infections typically cause a more severe type of sinus infection with more discolored, severe nasal discharge, nasal congestion, facial pressure, fevers, and most of the time, antibiotics will help take care of sinus infections caused by bacteria. Now, the, a common course is that people first get an infection with a virus that causes inflammation of the nasal cavity and the sinus linings, and then a bacteria takes advantage of that already infected area and irritated area and causes what we call a bacterial superinfection. Other contributors that you may have that can contribute to getting sinus infections, one or if you have allergies, as you can see here in this picture, the allergens actually look very similar to the COVID virus, but they are quite different in size and how they affect our nasal cavity. In addition to allergens, your anatomy may contribute to your getting sinus infections, whether you have narrow sinus openings compared to your peers who don't get sinus infections. You may have anatomic things like polyps growing in your nose that can be blocking your sinuses. You can also have a septal deviation or something called a concobulosa or other anatomic contributors making you more at risk for getting sinus infections. Also tobacco smoke or being around other irritants, whether it's solvents at work or lots of dust in the air, can all contribute to you getting sinus infections causing irritation in your nose and your nasal cavity. And lastly, some persons have genetic predispositions to getting sinus infections. There's also probably several genetic components that we're not aware of yet with the medical literature contributing to you getting sinus infections. But that being said, most genetic diseases that we're aware of that contribute to sinus infections, like cystic fibrosis or ciliary dyskinesia, are most likely showing up earlier in life. Now, how do we take care of sinus infections? You may go for the old-fashioned remedies of eating grandmother's chicken noodle soup or sticking your head over a steaming bowl of hot water and just getting symptomatic relief with that. If that doesn't cut it, you might go to the pharmacy and go to the over-the-counter sinus section and be overwhelmed by the sprays and the pills and the elixirs that can be used to treat sinus symptoms. And then if that doesn't work, you can go to the doctors and that's where we come in. You can see in this slide, there are four doctors, Dr. Lily Love, David Gallegos, Najoni Denepon, myself, Jared Seibert, who are all well-equipped, trained, and proficient in treating both the medical side of sinus disease as well as the surgical side of sinus disease. And in addition, Drs. Gallegos and myself are both fellows at the American Academy of Otolaryngic Allergy. So if allergy is a component on its own or contributing to your sinus disease, we are both fellows trained in the treatment as well as the diagnosis of allergy to include allergy shots or drops under the tongue and we'd be happy to see you in our clinic and take care of you. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thank you.